Hi there. In our last lesson, we looked at format specifiers and saw how we could format our results. Basically, we're using the print function and displaying results in a much more readable and easily to understand form without needing to use concatenations. Concatenations are very good, don't get me wrong, but format specifiers are a good way to do this. Now, I use the traditional format specifiers where you use the percent symbol and specify the data type, but Python, after Python specific version three, has included a much more better way to do this. And this is the essence of this lesson. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So I'll create a, I'll just go to the Explorer and let's create our, uh, let's say zero five underscore Format specifiers. On, let's just say uh, two. Uh, I'll just call that two. <laughs> I'm confused. I don't know how to name the document, so I'll just call that format specifiers two dot py, and I'll be fine since nothing uh, happened. Now, uh, a quick note: if you uh, see this, you might not see this on your uh, system that's because I'm actually signed into my uh, github account so I'm actually having version controls of the system so in case you're seeing this you're not seeing this please don't be worried if you don't have github installed and that's totally fine it just means I can easily track the changes in my file if you want to know more about version control you can click the link above and check out this video where I discuss what Git and GitHub is. And if you can install that, you can easily control your project's version control in Python. So uh, let's go ahead. I hope that's not really confusing. So I'll just close this and let's uh, begin. So first it's nice to give your project a title and we're just gonna say using format specifiers part two, and I prefer this method. You would hardly see me using uh, these ones. You hardly see me, but they exist, but you hardly ever see me uh, using them. Now, these are called uh, F strings. Oops. F strings. And they are literally, they are used to literally, literally represent your information. So let's just begin. Let's create a variable that accepts a user input. So let's call that name. And we're going to say input and say, uh, let's just say enter your name like so. So this is going to get your uh, the user input. And what we're going to do next is say uh, print, our normal print, and we say you entered and we'll add a little space here and usually we concatenate and say name so if we run this it's going to ask us to please enter our name so here I'm just gonna say uh, Mahmoud you can feel free to type in a name and say you entered Mahmoud so that's the information it's giving us so let's try another one with uh, an age so let's say age equals uh, input. I will create a string and say please. Now there's something you can also do. You can uh, do this. You can say greetings equals and you create a string and say please enter your age. And I'll just create a space underneath. And right here, we could just pass in the variable we created directly within the uh, function. And to do this, let's add this value right here. So if we run this, it's going to tell us to enter our age. And when it does that, we we'll just uh, take that value and do something with it. So let's say uh, you are and now next what we're going to do is to concatenate the age right and then add in a string and just concatenate years old so uh, it's kind of crude but let's just do this and uh, see this so enter your name 
my host, oops, sorry about that guys, you need to actually click here, Mahmoos, and then enter your age, 33, it says uh, you are 33 years old, like so. Like that. So let's use the uh, F string, and I'll actually see, you see why using an F string is so much uh, cooler and easier. So let's say our uh, F string example. So what we're going to do is to say print, and the first thing you'll do is to type a single letter F, and then you you open and you create your quotes. So in between your quotes, you can add information. So we can say, hi there. And then you create your curly brace and pass in the name of the variable. So say, hi there, name, like so. And then next we're gonna say, wow. So you are, and then we'll pass in the age in between. So let's say age and then we see years old. Cool. So basically what's going to happen is this. If we're using an F string, when we run the Python code, it's going to check the print statement. And once he sees F, it knows we want to use a format specifier using an F string. So it's going to say hi there. And whenever it's his name, it's going to pick that name coming from the keyboard and pass in that information. And that's super awesome. Let's go ahead and see that in action. So I'll just press the function key and F5. It says enter your name. I'm going to say Mahmoos. Now we'll see the old examples because we didn't clear them. I'm just going to leave that to the tree. It's going to say, hi there Mahmoos. Wow, so you're three, three years old. So that's one uh, nice way to do that. Let's see another uh, F string example. So I'm going to comment all this out because I don't want it to kind of show in our uh, code. So let's just uh, use triple quotes and convert this to a doc string. Basically, Python is going to ignore all this when we uh, convert it to a doc string. So next, let's just create a comment and say uh, f string example two for a second example. I'll just press Control S to save that. So I'm just going to say num equals 23.45. This is just a float. And let's create another float. Let's say num2. And just think about any value. Let's say uh, 4.67. It could be anything. Or let's make this smaller. Let's say 0 0.0345, like that. And let's create another variable to store the results of these two. So I'm just going to say solution equals num multiplied by num2. Now, one cool thing we can do is to actually um, print out the results with our f string. So let's say, uh, let's say print, and we'll pass in f, bring in our quotes, and say the results of multiplying Uh, so let's say the first num, so let's say num by num2 is the solution. And if we do this, let's save and run it. It says the result of multiplying 23.45 by 0 0.0345 is 0 0.089025. Now, one cool thing we could do is to use the same format specifier rules here as well. So let's say we want to convert the solution to two significant figures. What we will do is to say um, right here where we have the solution, we could use a coat and say point to F. Let's say uh, to SF, significant figures. If we save this and run it, 
we actually see it stops at 0 0.81 and has truncated all this and note it rounded this to the nearest hold number so we have 0 0.81 instead of 0 0.80 because 9 is a higher value so let's go ahead and see another uh, example let's say we want to format some monetary values the results with monetary calculations you want to use a comma to specify you know the uh, num numerical places or decimal places so let's see that uh, example so here let's uh, comment this section out as well because we don't want to clog our uh, IDE with all that information so I'll create triple quotes and down here I'll add another set of triple quotes if you want to use this and in case you're copying the uh, code files just get rid of this and this so that this code will be highlighted for instance if I do this and get rid of this that means this section has been active so I'll just undo those changes and save so I'll have a fresh section here so let's say uh, using f strings with monetary values so I'm saying f strings So let's create something here. Let's say, uh, let's just do a quick example. Uh, let's say I have expenses and I'll just specify some value, some random value. So to use the format specifier, I'm going to say print. We start with the keyword F and our quotes. And I'll just say the total amount spent. Oops, that's not how you spell it. And I'll press escape. Spent is. So what I'll do is to pass in the expenses like so. Right, so right in front of it, I'll just add a dollar symbol, which is a string. And what I'll do in between the expenses is put a single quote and a comma. So basically, I'm telling Python to format these expenses with commas and look at what Python is going to do. So I'll save that. And remember to run. You can use a run without debugging. And we have 23,454,534 cents. So that's how this uh, result has been formatted. Let me just clear my screen right here. So that's how that uh, output has been formatted. Let's go ahead and see another uh, example. So I'll just say uh, example two. I think we have example two already. It, uh, okay, we have example two. Let's call this example uh, three. So right here, let's just create, a, do a simple checks and balance with an account. So I'll say an account balance is equal to say uh, 5,000. And next, say I purchased groceries. So I just say groceries and then amount is uh, 230.24. So my account balance now is gonna be equal to my account balance minus groceries. So if I wanted to simply uh, do our regular print, if you remember, we just say print the account balance, and this should print out the uh, difference. So this is the difference it's printing out. Using a regular print, it's so boring, we'll just actually see a result. So uh, let's go ahead and now use our newfound format specifier. Oops. So next, we're actually calling the print method. Don't remember, don't forget your F. And then we'll create our codes. And I'll just say I spent. And then pass in the variable groceries. And I can put the currency symbol. I can use Naira, dollars, cities, pounds, whatever it is. But here, I'll just use, uh, I'll use Naira right here. So groceries 
on groceries. So I have, and then I'll put in my account balance like so. And what we'll do is to, you know, kind of truncate that and to two significant figures like so. And don't forget to close that curly brace. And just right here, I'm just going to add something and say left full stop. I'm broke. <laughs> so if we save this and we run this, so it says I spent on groceries, I have this left, I'm broke. So it's actually picking up the difference between the, uh, it's using this new value for the uh, account balance. And we can actually see that significant figure taking action there. Let's just quickly run that again. So it's already in two significant figures. I can switch this over to one. I set this to one, save it and run this. So it actually stopped at 0.8. So it rounded this uh, up like so. So let's actually uh, close that. So the format specifier has, we can even use it with uh, fractions for uh, percentages. So uh, let's show you how I, uh, we could actually do something like that. So let's say we have a, a fractional number and say we have 0.24. Now note 0.24 is the same thing as 0 0.24. So if I say print, let's say uh, we're trying to do a calculation with fractions. So I'll just say uh, F and we can even use a single quote or double quote. It doesn't matter as long as it's a string. And let's say uh, according to the paper, And let's say 0.25% of students. So I'm just going to say fraction. I'm just going to do 0.2% like so. And this should be, uh, we shouldn't have a code here. And I should provide, okay, I use the code single. Ah. I actually left the one out, so it's actually complaining. So according to the paper, a percentage of the students have laptops. So if I save that and run it, whoops, so we actually, we actually seen an error here. So let me go and see what that uh, prom problem is. So I'm actually using debugging mode. So if it actually encounters a problem, it's going to flag that problem. So let's see what the problem is. I created my opening and closing parentheses. I've specified my F string by starting with my F. And let's go ahead and see what's happening here. So I have fractions, but this is called fraction, not fractions. No, that name was funny. So I'll get rid of this S, save this and run our debugger again. So good, we don't have problems. So it says, according to the paper, 24.00% of students have uh, laptops. So uh, let's go ahead and see how we could uh, print with the not so common second version of F strings. So uh, let's say, uh, let's print with F strings version two. And honestly, I almost, more than 100%, I just use this because I prefer seeing the variables, but there's another built-in version of the F string, which I'm going to show you uh, right now. We already have this account balance and let's just go ahead and use that. So say print like so. And uh, this time around, we're not going to add the F. So I'm just going to see my account balance. I'm just going to add a comma. I'll put a dollar symbol because I would like to use a dollar symbol. You can use any uh, symbol for currency. 
and we'll just create an empty curly brace. So that's the rule for the second way of using the format specifier. If you have an empty curly brace, you don't include the F right here. Each time you use the F means you need to supply a value for that variable. If you're not using the F, you can only put the curly braces empty. So let's say my account balance is too low to buy an Xbox One S, like so. So immediately after the uh, closing quote, the last quote, we're going to have to add dot format. And then within parentheses, we're going to add the variable. So I have the, uh, it's the account balance that's the variable we want to use right here. So if we, uh, let's save and run. So my, it says my account balance is $4,769.76 is too low to buy an Xbox One. So I think I, need, I just fix this. Let's see which is this amount. I think that being uh, the, that's a much more preferable uh, syntax to use. So that's for a single item. How do we use this for uh, multiple items? So let's quickly see a simple example. So let's say we have item and it's going to be, uh, let's say milk. And we have item two. It's going to be, uh, let's say sugar. And we have item three. And uh, say coffee. So let's just uh, see how we can create a nice example using uh, this value. So first I'm going to say print. And because I'm not using the uh, F string format, what we're going to do is to just uh, create our uh, code and let's go ahead and add value. So I'm going to say today, comma, I bought a can or a tin of, so the first one's going to be milk. So, and a sachet of or a box of the next variable is going to be sugar where we're not going to put it in and then let's say and some sweet coffee beans at the store and what we're going to do now is to add the uh, dot format. So, but from right here, I can just drop this line and use a single backslash and get back here and say dot format. And then within our opening and curly, uh, closing curly braces, braces, I'm going to add item, item two, and item three. So let's save that and run. It says uh, today I bought a tin of milk and a box of a box of sugar and some sweet coffee beans at the store. So it's going to be I bought a tin of milk, a box of sugar. I shouldn't have the at the uh, end. All right, I think this is uh, this better. So it says today I bought a tin of milk a box of sugar and some sweet coffee beans at the store. So uh, that's one, that's a uh, second way we can use the uh, format specifier. So uh, I don't want this to be too long, So, but hopefully you've had an understanding of what sp format specifiers are and how you can use that to represent your result in a much more easily to understand and uh, you know, a very nice formatted way. You also saw how you could uh, represent your result and truncate your result. Now, the F strings function don't just stop there. You can actually perform calculations 
within a result in between the F string itself. But that's going to be video for another lesson. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.